I had to take a lot more vitamin D when I was overweight at 300 pounds than I have to take now. It all has to do with how our fat stores the vitamin D that we take in. In this video, you're gonna learn how vitamin D gets sequestered in our fat tissue, the more fat tissue that we have. And then we'll also learn how it doesn't get released until we start to lose some weight, but then we will also talk about the specific kind of vitamin D that you should take if you're overweight and how much you should take depending on how overweight you are. So let's break it down. So the first study I have to reference just talks about how vitamin D is largely associated with obesity. So there's a study that was published in the journal Molecules, okay? And they took two groups. One group went on a Mediterranean diet that was a little bit calorie restricted to lose some weight. And another group went on a very low calorie ketogenic diet to lose some weight. It's not a ketogenic good or bad study, it's just, different ways of losing weight. So the ketogenic group lost significantly more weight and they found that the group that lost more weight also had a significant increase in their vitamin D levels. The more weight that was lost, the higher the vitamin D levels went up. In fact, the group that lost weight, the ketogenic diet group on average ended up having for every kilogram lost, they had an increase of 0.39 nanograms per milliliter of vitamin D. Okay, the Mediterranean group lost weight too, and they had an increase in vitamin D, but it just, they didn't lose as much weight, so their vitamin D levels didn't go up as much. Hmm, it tells us that we tend to store our vitamin D in our fat, and when we burn the fat, it gets liberated. And that was confirmed in another study that was published in the journal Bone and Mineral Research. Okay, they found that, once again, when people lost weight, they had an improvement in their vitamin D levels. They found that adipose tissue actually stored the vitamin D. And when the fat tissue would get burned, it would potentially liberate some of the vitamin D. But I wish it was that simple. It actually gets really interesting and it's kind of a bummer. Hey, after this video, I do want you to check out Thrive Market, by the way. If you're looking for like vitamin D rich foods and just sort of more, I don't know, whole food way of getting your vitamin D levels up, I do recommend because they have a lot of different good varieties of foods. Whether you're doing keto, paleo, things like that, all you have to do is look at the nutrition panel and see which foods are rich in vitamin D. But anyhow, Thrive Market just makes it easy. It gets delivered to your doorstep. You don't have to go to the grocery store for your pantry goods. It saves me a ton of money and makes my life a ton easier because I've got two kids, I'm busy, I'm running a business, I just don't have time to always go to the store so the convenience is just a huge piece for me not to mention it's super economical and they have been very good to this channel as far as helping us create amazing content and supporting this channel for the last few years so big thank you to thrive market and please check them out down below not just for your own convenience but also out of support for this channel so now i have to rain on your parade a little bit it's hard enough to lose weight now it's even harder when we realize wait a minute we don't always liberate our vitamin D when we burn fat. You see, our fat cells, like when I was 300 pounds, I was pretty fat. I had a lot of fat tissue, okay? And that fat tissue becomes somewhat insulin resistant, but it also becomes resistant to what are called catecholamines. Catecholamines are like adrenaline and epinephrine, and every time we burn fat, we utilize that adrenaline and epinephrine because it stimulates the fats to release in like a fight or flight sort of sense. Well, what happens is we become resistant to that. So we become resistant to catecholamines, meaning we don't actually get to burn the fat very well, which means we're locking up. We're like holding that vitamin D hostage. So it's stored in our tissue. We can't do anything with it. But then it gets even worse. The adipose tissue has vitamin D metabolizing enzymes. So not just does it hold our vitamin D hostage, it metabolizes it and breaks it down so we can't use it. So now we have like a triple whammy effect. We consume vitamin D, we're doing all the right things. Vitamin D comes into our body and the fat just says, nope, it's mine. It takes it, sequesters it. Okay, well then it not only sequesters it, but then it prevents us from releasing it because it blocks the adrenaline and the noradrenaline and all that stuff. So not only, now we've locked up the vitamin D, but any hope of getting it out is greatly diminished. But then, oh my gosh, to make matters even worse, the fat gobbles it up and breaks it down into something that's not really usable. Oh my gosh, okay, now we can't even use the vitamin D that we can barely get out that got locked up in the first place. There is good news though. Vitamin D and the kind of vitamin D is somewhat dose dependent. Okay, there are studies that demonstrate that obese people simply need two to three times as much vitamin D as someone that's not overweight or obese. And it seems to be directly correlated with how much fat is on someone's body. I wish I could give you an exact number, but generally what we're seeing in a lot of the research, don't quote me on this, I'm not a doctor, the research just points to about six to 10,000 IUs of vitamin D during a loading phase, and then about three to 5,000 IUs per day per, for maintenance after that. 
But let's break it down a little bit more because there's different kinds of vitamin D that might be better for you if you are a little bit overweight or like me, a lot overweight before. You see, we have two different kinds of vitamin D. We have pre-vitamin D, which is cholecalciferol. Okay, now when they look at the research and you look at sort of the studies and the biopsies, you see, okay, cholecalciferol is largely skewed in the fat in obese people. 75% of it's hanging out in the fat. Only 25% is actually doing what it's supposed to do. That's a bummer. Then we have another form, a more bioavailable form called calcifidiol. Calcifidiol is only 35% stored in the fat. It's still a lot, but okay, a lot more is liberated. So if you're overweight or obese, you wanna lean into calcifidiol. But what if you're not overweight or obese? Does it matter which one you take? Kinda not. Here's an interesting study. The journal Endocrinology and Metabolism took a look at normal weight people and it gave them cholecalciferol and calcifidiol. And they found that they had equal response to both. Vitamin D levels went up the same, whether it was one form or the other. That's in normal lean people. But then you look at obese people and it was largely skewed towards calcifidiol being much better. They didn't really use much of the cholecalciferol. So in normal people, it was the same. In obese people, it's different. So it does matter the form that you take. And then they also found that obese people needed about two and a half times the amount of calcifidiol and just generally mild overweight people needed about 1.5x, which indicates once again, it is dose dependent based upon how much fat is on your body. So for me, when I was, I was like 110 pounds overweight. So I needed like eight to 10,000 IUs for a little while. And then I kind of stabilized around 5,000 IUs. Remember, full disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I can't tell you how much to take. I'm telling you my experience here. And I use calcifidiol. Now, as things change, I can take either one just to paint a picture. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and do pay attention to your vitamin D levels. Go to your physician and have them run the test and see where you're at. Okay, there are so many signs that point to vitamin D being a very important part of our lives. Hormone-like properties, potentially signaling devices, and definitely playing a role in our metabolism. I'll see you tomorrow.